Hi everybody and welcome to the tutorial video for Prelab 5 for Stats 250. So in this Prelab video we're going to be working with categorical data and learning how to import data from uh, formats that other than .r data files as well as learning how to make bar plots and to get frequency tables from R commander. So I just have R open here so per usual we're going to start by typing into the console library an open parenthesis, capital R, CMDR, close that parenthesis, and hit enter to open our commander. Okay, so now our commander is open. So we're going to go ahead and load a data set into our commander from a file format called CSV. So CSV stands for comma separated values, and it's a really common data format that you might see if you use uh, or if you work with data in research or from other sources. So let's show you what this file type looks like. So in my stats 250 folder, or I have a data set called sleep deprived, and I'm going to right click on this and open it with notepad just to show you what this looks like. So we can see that every line is an observation. And the columns, the things that separate the, what would be a column in something like Excel, is a comma here. So hence the comma separated values. So let's go ahead and load this into our commander. So in our commander, I'm going to come up to data, import data, from text file, clipboard, or URL. Click that. And it's going to open this little wizard here. So the first thing that we want to do is give our data, uh, give this data set a name. So I'm going to call this sleep deprived. That's the name of the CSV file. And the only other thing that I'm going to change here is field separator. So remember CSV is comma separated values. So I'm going to change the field separator to commas. And then we'll click OK, and it'll open a file browser to choose the file for us to open, which in this case is called Sleep Deprived. We're going to open this. And we can come up here. We can see that the data has been loaded into R. We can hit View Dataset. And here's our nice set of data. So this is the data set that's used in the chapter on summarizing data um, in the 250 course pack. And basically, this data contains 86 rows, one per person. We asked 86 people whether or not they had gotten enough sleep in the previous 24 hours. And their answers are recorded as either yes or no. So you're either sleep deprived, yes, or you're not sleep deprived, you're no. Okay, before we get started with anything, it's important to follow these next steps closely if you're running R4.0.0. So what we need to do is we need to tell R that that deprived variable in our data set is categorical. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to come up to data, manage variables in active data set, and we're going to select compute new variable. So we're going to click this and this compute new variable wizard will pop up and we're going to create a new variable name here. We're going to call this new variable name really whatever we want. We're just going to, I'm going to say deprived.cat. For the expression to compute, we want to type the word as a period factor, an open parenthesis, and then come over here and click this deprived variable, close the parenthesis, and click OK. So now if you view the data set, You'll see that we now have a third variable here. It's called deprived.cat. And it's exactly the same as before, but now R knows that this variable is categorical. So now we can go ahead and create box plots and all sorts of summaries that we would use for a categorical variable. Make sure that you're using that categorical variable for all of your analyses going forward. So let's start by making a bar, uh, bar chart for this. So we'll come up to graphs bar graph, choose deprived here, and we'll come over to the options tab. So now in the options tab, we can provide things like labels for the plot. So here, this is going to say sleep deprived. 
the y-axis label will leave as automatic and the graph title will say a this is a bar graph of sleep deprived status by 250 instructional team and I'll put a new line in there just by adding a slash and an N. We can go ahead and click OK. And now in the original R window, a nice bar graph will have appeared. So on the Y axis, we have frequency. And we can see that we have about 50 some individuals who are sleep deprived and maybe about 35 folks who are not sleep deprived. So but it's hard to get actual numbers from from just this graph here. So let's get a frequency table. So to do that, we're going to come up to statistics, summaries, frequency distributions. I'm going to choose this variable called deprived and click OK. And now you can see in our output window, it's given us the counts of our yeses and nos, as well as the percentages here. So 59.3% of individuals in our sample were sleep deprived. So another thing that we might be interested in doing now is constructing a confidence interval around the uh, proportion of individuals in our sample who were sleep deprived. So remember that we can use R as a calculator. So to do that, we're just going to come up to the R script window and we can start typing numbers and doing math in, in R script. But before we do this, we need to check that the assumptions that uh, need to be satisfied for us to use the normal approximation to the binomial are satisfied. So in particular, those assumptions are that NP is greater than or equal to 10, and N times 1 minus P is also greater than or equal to 10. So we're going to check those with P hat here, because we don't know what the population proportion P is. So we want to check that N times P hat, so 86 times 0.593 is greater than or equal to 10, which it is, and uh, 86 times 1 minus 0.593 is also greater than or equal to 10, which is the case. So we can so go So the way that we'll do this is we're going to start by typing 0 0.593. Let's get the lower bound of the confidence interval first. So this is going to be minus Z star for a 95% confidence interval, Z star is 1.96 times the square root, SQRT, open parenthesis, of P hat, 0 0.593, times 1 minus P hat, so 1 minus 0 0.593, divided by N. N here is 35 plus 51, or 86. Close those parentheses and we can hit submit. And now this is the lower bound of our confidence interval. We can get the upper bound on the confidence interval by just copying this line, pasting it onto a new line and changing this minus to a plus and clicking submit as well. All right, so let's come over to our R Markdown tab just to compile this document. We're gonna go all the way up to the top and we're going to replace this with our main title. So the title here will say Prelab 5. Notice that I'm not including a colon in the title. If I included a colon here, I would get a whole bunch of errors when I go to make the HTML file. So do not include a colon in your title. Working with categorical data. going to type your name in here. And now we can add comments to our document. Make sure that you leave a blank line between this last set of back ticks here and your comments. This will help the document flow together nicely. So we can say we estimate with 95% confidence that the true population proportion of individuals who are sleep deprived falls between 0 0.4892 and 0 0.6968. Okay, so now let's save our R Markdown document. So we're going to come up to File, Save R Markdown File as, 
and I'm going to call this just Prelab 5. Click Save, and click Generate Report. So now our report has opened. We can see it combines all of our code, our bar graphs, the frequency tables that we've got, the math that we did to compute a confidence interval, as well as now nicely printed our sentence describing the confidence interval. If I go back into the folder where I saved all of this, I should have an HTML file, as well as an MD file and an RMD file. Remember that the HTML file is what you're going to upload to Canvas. If you've got any questions, feel free to email your GSI if you're having issues with our markdown. Um, other than that, uh, make sure that you're completing the assignment that is not described in this video, but is actually on the Assignments tab in Canvas, and we will see you in lab this week.